Hey there, I'm Ali Astrocyte. Welcome back to Neurotransmissions. This week, I want to do things a little bit differently, and instead of focusing on a science topic, I want to talk about a scientist who I find to be particularly inspiring. There are a lot of researchers out there who do really amazing research, but there are also some researchers who, in addition to their incredible research, are doing really great activism to help make science a more welcoming environment for everyone. This week, I want to take a minute to talk about a scientist who's done incredible work to promote women in science. And his name is Ben Barris. Yes. Ben Barris has an incredibly impressive scientific resume. He did his undergraduate degree at MIT, he went to med school at Dartmouth, and he got his PhD from Harvard University. He's currently the chair of neurobiology at Stanford University. His research over the past several decades has been really incredible. Ben Barris was part of a study that was published in 1997 that really changed the way that we saw glia cells. I've mentioned glia before, but only in passing, and I'm definitely gonna talk about them again because they happen to be my favorite kinds of cells. But essentially what Ben's study showed was that a particular type of cell called the astrocyte that represent the majority of the cells in your brain are really, really important for helping neurons make normal connections with each other. This study really changed the way that we thought about astrocytes and led to an entire field of research into how astrocytes influence the connections between neurons. This paper is especially interesting to me because it's the foundation of the majority of my own research. And in fact, I kind of have a bias as to why I find Ben Barris's work so exciting. He was my advisor's advisor, so that kind of makes him my science grandpa. All of these accomplishments would make Ben Barris an incredibly outstanding scientist just because of his research. But on top of all of that, Ben Barris is also a great advocate for women in science. And his activism comes from a very personal place, because Ben knows what it's like to be a woman in science. Ben is in fact transgender. Ben Barris was born in 1955, so when he was getting ready to apply to college, science was still a pretty unfriendly place for women. He was actually discouraged from applying to MIT, and once he got there, he faced a lot of sexism. At one point, he was able to solve a math problem that the men in his class found difficult, so he was accused of having a boyfriend solve it for him. At another point, he applied for an award and was privately informed that he had the most competitive application, but the award ended up going to a less qualified male candidate. It wasn't until he achieved tenure at Stanford that Ben came out as trans. And in Ben's opinion, nothing about him has changed since his transition almost 20 years ago except for the fact that he's now socially seen as a man, and that's made a huge difference in the way that he's been treated. A scientist was overheard as saying, Ben's research is amazing, much better than his sister's. They were talking about his work before he transitioned. Ben Barris gained some national attention when, in 2006, he responded to some claims that were made by the then president of Harvard University. Lawrence Summers claimed in a talk that science isn't biased against women and women aren't discriminated against in science, but rather women just aren't as good at science as men. Ben fired back with an opinion piece in the publication Nature, highlighting key problems with this view. And he said something that really has stuck with me and that is one of my favorite quotes. He said, I am suspicious when those who are at an advantage proclaim that a disadvantaged group of people is innately less able. But Ben pointed to research that indicates there's no scientific evidence that boys are innately better than girls at math or science. However, as he highlighted in his piece and is still being proven true with research today, there is evidence of bias against women in science. For example, there was a study done where they had recruiters look at the resumes of male and female scientists without their names on them. And in that case, the resumes of men and women were seen to be equally competitive. But once they added names back to the applications, and so the gender of the applicant was visible, women had to be far more productive to be seen as competitive with the male scientists. Another issue that Ben has talked about more recently is that high-profile male scientists are less likely than their female counterparts to mentor female graduate students and postdocs. This might not sound like it would make a big difference if you're not involved in the academic science world, but what can happen in science is if you wanna really be successful and join a high profile institution as a researcher, you have to do research with other high profile researchers. Getting the opportunity to work with a high profile scientist such as a Nobel laureate can make a really huge difference in what kinds of job opportunities you have available to you once you've finished your training. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about the research on bias against women and minorities in science, I suggest you check out some of the links that we've included in the description below. One of the things that I really love about Ben Barris is that he does he doesn't just talk about the issues with the system. He also actively seeks to come up with solutions that could help address these biases. One of the suggestions that Ben has made is to include trainee diversity requirements in grant applications. Scientists rely on funding from outside sources, such as the government and private organizations, to keep their research going. 
So if when they applied for that funding, scientists were required to talk about how they were going to provide an environment for diverse trainees, that could help create more support for those scientists. He's also trying to think of ways that we can change the system to better support diverse trainees and reduce pipeline leaks, so to help people, women in particular, but also people from different minority backgrounds, uh, find a more comfortable environment in the sciences. Another suggestion he's made is to change the rules about achieving tenure so that women are able to more comfortably take time off in order to have their children, because usually the overlap between when women are having children and when women are expected to be their most productive as a scientist overlaps pretty heavily, so it can be very difficult for women to feel like they can have both. It's really awesome to have a scientist who is such a great researcher who's produced so much amazing science but who also advocates so much for making science a place that everyone can feel safe and comfortable. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you enjoyed having the opportunity to learn about such an amazing person. Thanks for watching this episode of Neurotransmissions. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out in the future. If you really like what we do, please consider contributing to our Patreon. We love making these videos and your support really helps. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ali Astrocyte, over and out.